Hey folks, Will Brink here, www.brinkzone.com, and today I want to cover a fairly old topic, but one that uh, apparently won't go away, and that's uh, protein requirements for strength training athletes, strength athletes, what have you. Uh, <clears throat> I still get what seems to be a debate uh, whether our strength athletes, people that are uh, spending time in the gym, will benefit from additional protein, and the answer to that is yes. Uh, Basically, there's really not much of a debate about that within the community of physiologists and nutritional scientists and stuff that study this stuff. However, there is a surprisingly large number of uh, nutritional authorities, quote unquote, and medical professionals and stuff who will still maintain that there's no benefit to additional protein. Uh, they are incorrect. The data, the bulk of the data, uh, the bulk of the studies that have looked at this are fairly conclusive or quite conclusive at the ones that you're uh, looking at that show benefit to additional protein in terms of effects on body composition uh, changes to additional protein. Now, and if you were listening to that last comment I made about most of the studies finding benefit, the re reality of that is not all of them find benefit. Most do, but not all. And that brings up an interesting question, which is, well, why? And a recent paper uh, actually does a really good job of examining that, and the researchers proposed what they called the change and spread theory of protein intakes for athletes and what they found in the data. And what they found was the studies that found benefit, uh, there was a very specific uh, spread between uh, the two different groups, i.e. low protein, high protein, and there was an obvious change, a, a dramatic change between their baseline intake and the amount they gave them. That is, let's say you take a group uh, and give them uh, 60 grams of protein as an example, and you give the other group 70. Well, that's not much of a, of a spread and hence those studies do not find benefit. So when you applied those specific requirements, that is the difference between the change and the spread was great enough to show an effect, the studies were consistently showed benefit, that is improved body composition changes, and the studies that have a minimal spread and change did not. And what I, you can go read the study, I'm gonna link it, it's on my website, I'll link it below. Uh, I'm not gonna go into great detail about it here, but needless to say, it, it pretty much puts to bed for me and should for other people this supposed debate that there is not uh, a benefit to higher protein intakes than say the RDA. There clearly is, most of the data supports that, and the smaller number of studies that don't support that are very obvious as to why they didn't find that conclusion, hence this latest study. Now finally, if you don't want to actually read this study and you just want the cliff notes, well here's the real kicker as far as I'm concerned. The studies, the bulk of the studies that met the inclusion criteria uh, found that the benefit was at, get this, right about a gram per pound of body weight, which is exactly the recommendations that have been given for decades and have been used for decades by <clears throat> a large majority of successful strength training athletes. The studies that uh, did not find benefit were using far lower protein intakes, and I just thought the irony of that was uh, what really made this paper stand out to me. And uh, for that alone, I recommend taking a look at it. But if not, um, you can rest assured that the bulk of the data does support additional protein being beneficial as far as uh, changes in body composition you know, to your weight training. And the studies that are contrary, which are less of them, note, uh, were specifically not effective for reasons that have been discovered. And again, as I said, are sort of um, uh, pretty self, uh, no duh category. That is, well, it would make sense if you weren't feeding uh, people enough uh, protein from their baseline or from each group that you wouldn't find benefit. But again, it had to be looked at, and these uh, scientists did an excellent job of that, I thought. Uh, and I hope that helps, and if it does, please help the like and the Twitter and uh, help me out, and I'll see you all on the Brink Zone. Now, for more information on this topic, head on over to www.brinkzone.com, where you'll find my blog, more videos for reports on fat loss, muscle building supplementation, fitness, health, and longevity, as well as a ton of articles in my free weekly fitness newsletter. And I'll see you all on the Brink Zone.